I have something important to tell you. You've been lied to. So have I. And it's been happening for years. Our ammonia test kits have been lying to us for a really long time, and I think we need to talk about it. All right, everybody, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. Yes, we have been lied to for a long time. Our ammonia test kits most likely have been telling us, maybe not necessarily a lie, but a half-truth, and I think it's an important thing we need to discuss, and that is, what is our ammonia test kit doing for us? What numbers is it really giving us? So stay tuned. Okay, so if you are somebody who's dealing with an ammonia problem right now, we have a video where we talk about how to lower ammonia, how to deal with it. I will put a card in the upper right hand corner. I would check that video out as well. But when it comes to measuring ammonia, we have to understand a couple things. The ammonia test kits, whether they're API or just about any other test kit, are going to measure something called total ammonia nitrogen. It's all of the ammonia in your tank and it includes two types of ammonia. We have the ionized ammonia, which is NH4+, also known as ammonium, and we have ammonia, NH3. And it measures both of them in combination. There's just one problem. The unionized ammonia, NH3, is about 100 times more toxic than the ionized ammonia, NH4. Because we're getting both of those numbers, we're not getting the whole picture. Let me show you what I mean. So I get this question a lot. I have a new tank or I have an ammonia spike, what do I do? And the test kits are measuring about one part per million. And my question is always, I need more information. To properly measure ammonia concentrations in your tank and determine if they are actually bad for your fish, you need two more things minimally. You need to know the temperature of the tank and the pH. And again, that's why I talk so much about measuring water parameters. I will put a link for the API test kit down in the description below. If you are serious about fish keeping, it really is something that you should be doing, measuring pH, measuring water hardness, measuring ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, especially nitrate when it comes to water changes. We have a video about that. I'll put a card in the upper right hand corner. But when it comes to ammonia specifically, pH is important as is temperature. And I'd like to give you a really clear example as to why that is. So before we go any further, there's two things that you should know. In the description, there are two very important links to some really good websites. One is an unionized ammonia calculator. The other one is a table in case you're interested of how pH and temperature plays a role in unionized ammonia concentrations. So example number one, let's say you measure your ammonia in the tank and it comes back at one part per million. Now, initially that sounds really, really bad. You've got ammonia that we are registering on a test kit and the common wisdom is if you've got any ammonia in the tank, one, the tank may not be cycled and two, that's gonna be really bad for your fish. What we wanna talk about today, let's take it a little bit deeper. There are two other things that are going to play a role in whether or not that ammonia is really bad for your fish, temperature and pH. So in this example, we have an ammonia concentration of one part per million that seems like it would be bad. But let's say your pH in that tank, it's a soft water tank, it's maybe it's a black water tank, and the pH is around six. Let's also say, just for uh, the sake of this example, that right now that tank is right around 65 degrees Fahrenheit, which is right around 18 degrees Celsius. If you were to calculate the unionized ammonia in that tank using the calculator that I've got in the description, you would see the unionized ammonia is at 0 0.00041 milligrams per liter or parts per million. It's the same thing. What we have to understand is when it comes to unionized ammonia, the threshold for what's considered dangerous is right around 0 0.05 milligrams per liter or parts per million. So in this example, even though we have one part per million ammonia, total ammonia nitrogen, we only have 0 0.00041 parts per million of unionized ammonia, the bad stuff, and therefore it's really not very dangerous for your fish. Now, let's take example number two. You've still got one part per million ammonia, total ammonia nitrogen. Your temperature is right around 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty close to 22 degrees Celsius. Your pH, however, has increased to a pH of seven. If you were to look at the unionized ammonia, now we're at 0 0.006 milligrams per liter or parts per million. So again, the concentration of unionized ammonia has gone up because one, pH has gone up, and two, temperature has also gone up. 
Is it something we need to really worry about? At this point, no, because we're still at 0 0.006. While it's gone up considerably due to the temperature, due to the pH, we're still not at that danger level. All right, now let's take example number three. We're still at one part per million total ammonia nitrogen. This time your pH is around an 8.2. Your temperature is right around 79 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty close to 26 degrees Celsius. When you calculate the unionized ammonia at that point, now we've got a problem because the unionized ammonia is at 0.107. That's about twice the concentration that would be considered safe for fish. Right? We start having problems at 0.05, we're at 0.1. Now we've got some issues we have to deal with. In all cases, the total ammonia nitrogen was the same. What changed? pH was going up, temperature was going up, and as those two parameters increase, so will your unionized ammonia concentrations. This has some very practical implications about how we deal with fish, not just in the aquarium, but when we bring fish home. So you may have heard of uh, ways to acclimate fish. Some people, like myself, we get the fish temperature acclimated, we open up the bags, the fish go in a net, the fish go right in the fish tank once the temperature is set. Other people, they will do drip acclimations where they will put the fish probably in the tank, temperature acclimate them, and then slowly add water to the bag. Now here's why that can sometimes be a problem. When fish are in a bag for longer periods of time, I'm not necessarily talking about when fish go from a pet store to your home and they're probably transferred from one place to another in less than a half hour, there isn't going to be a sufficient amount of time to build up lots of ammonia. But let's say those fish were shipped to you and they've been in a bag for a couple days, or they've been at a swap or an auction where maybe they've been in a bag all day long secreting ammonia. What's happening when that ammonia is secreted is a couple things. One, they're also releasing carbon dioxide, which is creating carbonic acid. Well, it's an acid, so guess what's happening to the pH? The pH is going down in the bag steadily. The second thing that's going on is as those fish are out of their natural habitat, the temperature is probably also decreasing. And so now we get those fish home. And what do we do? We start to increase the temperature so they don't go into temperature shock. And we should absolutely be doing that. So if the bag is now, you know, upper 60s, low 70s, and we want to get those fish into a fish tank at 80 degrees, we float the bags. Great. But if we open that bag, what's going to happen is all that CO2 that was converted to carbonic acid, that CO2 can leave that bag, go into the atmosphere, and now the pH also starts to increase. Guess what we've just done? We've done two things that are going to take that unionized ammonia and make it more concentrated. And once you get to about two parts per million um, unionized ammonia in an aquatic system, you can have fish death happen pretty rapidly. And so what we don't want to be doing is increasing temperature and potentially increasing pH in the water, in the bag, all at the same time and have that ammonia that's accumulated in the bag go from the ionized safer form to what is 100 times more toxic, the unionized form. So it's something to consider when you're acclimating your fish. I'm not telling you you can't do drip acclimations. For some fish, it may be very necessary due to water hardness or maybe they're wild fish, but we do have to be careful about how we do it. All right, but I really wanna be clear on something. If you have any ammonia in your tank, something is still off with that ecosystem. It may not necessarily be damaging to fish at lower concentrations, but when you have a closed aquatic system, a fish tank, your test kits, whether they're measuring total ammonia nitrogen or whether you're doing the calculations for unionized ammonia, those test kits, whether it's a strip or a liquid test kit, should be reading zero for ammonia concentration. It's the same thing for nitrite. When you are Wondering if your tank is fully cycled, both ammonia and nitrite concentrations should read zero regardless of the testing method, and you should have registered nitrates in your test kit. And if those three things are happening, then you have a good indication that the bacteria in your tank is sufficient to begin handling the bioload of adding fish. So again, ammonia should be zero, nitrites should be zero. There should be some registered amount of nitrates, preferably in that five to 10 parts per million. Once you're getting over that 20, 30, 40 parts per million of nitrates, maybe that's a little high as well. We have a video about nitrate concentrations. I will put that along with the video for nitrite concentrations up in the upper right hand corner. So you can take a look at both of those in addition to this. So we nerded out on water parameters a little bit, but I think it's fun. As we become more advanced in the hobby, we wanna look at things a little bit more in depth. 
absolutely, if you're cycling a tank, if you think you've got problems, you should be testing for ammonia. However, you should also be looking at the unionized ammonia concentrations in your tank. It's simple enough to look at the temperature. You should have a way to test for pH. Again, there will be an affiliate link down in the description below where you can look at the API water testing kits. I highly recommend them if you're gonna be keeping fish and trying to keep them alive. If you like this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.